Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the podcast we discuss all things USMNT y la selección mexicana. My name is Adrian, joining me once again, Carlos Macayo. Adrian, Adrian, what's new, man? How are you? Hey, man, how's it, how's it going? We're here Sunday night, um, sore from my earlier run, but uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoying the, the remainder of this night. Hey man, we're gonna get trolled again. We mentioned running like that one guy that mentioned, "Hey, drop those uh, Stravas." Uh, <laughs> I know, right? But nah, that's good, man. Glad you had a good weekend. Uh, but we're here to discuss uh, Christian Pulisic, um, specifically his season, his incredible season, he's having this this uh, this season. I guess with AC Milan, um, you know, just uh, how those stats stack up versus other other players, other American players that have played, you know, in the old continent uh, that have had successful, um, I guess, seasons out there. Uh, you know, this is Pulisic's, I think, best form of his career, other than, you know, kind of locked, that lockdown Pulisic era when he was at Chelsea for those couple of weeks. But this is now longer than that. He's been doing it for more consistent basis. Eight games so far into the tournament, at least league games, not counting Champions League and Coppa Italia for AC Milan. And uh, he's doing well. Uh, he has seven goals and four assists across all competitions, five goals and three assists in Serie A, one goal in the Champions League, and one assist in Coppa Italia, on track to do 30 goal assist contributions of this season across all competitions, which would be very incredible for a player playing in Serie A. Initial thoughts, Adrian. Uh, do you think this is Pulisic's best form of his career? This has to be cataloged as Pulisic's best year so far in all of his entire career uh, in European football. Yes, we know that he had a stint in Chelsea where he was highly participative, providing assists and scoring goals. But I think this is the moment in his career that... He has not only proven to be a great support role player, but also one of the stars of the team. And that's one of the items or one of the specific situations that we have asked from him since he joined Chelsea. And something that we've asked for American players to do and produce in Europe. Uh, you know, we know that there's a lot, uh, you know, over 40 American players in Europe. Um but, you know, and a lot of them are participants, Jedi Robinson, uh, you know, Pulisic, obviously, uh, you have, you know, a lot, Ricardo Pepe, you know, that's whatever. Um, but uh, no one has really ever gotten up to that level of being a co-captain, a captain, or, you know, or, you know, it, or it's been a while, right? We saw Dempsey captain Fulham a couple of times, or Tim Howard, captain Everton a couple of times, et cetera, but never on a consistent basis and never on a, on a basis where they were what people consider game changers for these big teams and uh, integral members and, you know, integral part of the big team going forward. And, you know, without them, you know, the team isn't really a- as good, right. As a uh, Pulisic, um, vital role. Uh, there's even um, AC Milan fans on social media saying, uh, you know, he should be given a captaincy. He should be one of the captains, captains, co-captain, whatever. And uh, without, without him, uh, AC Milan wouldn't, be doing as well this season so far because he's really he's contributed so much already um do you think that's fair uh do you think he's on, on track to to maybe get a captaincy or get a nod for maybe one of those bigger roles and responsibilities on that team i think it's overdue man i think he uh he proved himself he proved to ic milan and all of it on all of their fans and himself last season that he could be a reliable player for the team this season now he's proving to any, to everyone and himself as well that he can be the go-to man for the team so i think the next step for him to continue settling down as one of the AC Milan stars is to get a bigger role in the leadership, um, I guess, squad, if you want to call it, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you remember, but a lot of people were uh, concerned that he wasn't he wasn't going to be in a similar situation as he was in Chelsea, where he had maybe more talented players ahead of him in the name specifically of Rafael Leao. But he has managed to be a actually great combo with Rafael Leao. He has found himself to be, you know, that... Um, complement of these talented players and it just seems that everyone around him seems to be playing or improving their performance whenever Pulisic uh, puts on his uh, working hat and and cooks right so I, I think if he need, if he really wants to see his career take this next step or get into the next level then the the next best decision for him is to push for that specific um, appointment of he needs to be the leader or one of the leaders at least of this team yeah, I mean, up there, like you say, he's playing with Leal on the left side, Pulisic on the right side, and then Alvaro Morata on the, up top, right? He's even making Alvaro Morata look good uh, this season. Um, but, Adrian, what do you think is the big factor here to this improvement that we're seeing Pulisic? Obviously, he's older. He's more experienced than he was in the Chelsea days. Um, I think, personally, it's a lot of factors. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. I mean, injuries, uh, limited, you know, how he was so limited because of them in Chelsea. Um, the, you know, the Chelsea, we know the carousel of, of rotational of coaches that they had out there. Uh, granted, this is the second coach with AC Milan already, Fonseca. 
but um, they seem to have a lot more confidence in him than than Tuchel or uh, you know those other Lampard did initially um, out there. What do you what do you attribute this uh, successful season so far? I think it's a combination of a few things, right? The first one is uh, that AC Milan really wanted him, right? It was an, an actual target of them to acquire Pulisic. So for him to feel wanted, for him to understood, understand that he was going to a, to a place that he was going to be a frequent player, not only a rotational squad player as he was in Chelsea, I think that played a crucial role. Uh, the fact that, of course, Spalletti left to coach uh, the Italian national team, but Paolo Fonseca seemed to keep on having the same structure and the same strategy as Spalletti, and that has proven to be a very very effective for him. Another thing that I feel has helped him a lot is that Serie A doesn't have as many games or matches as Premier League, um, and it's not as physically demanding as as the Premier League. And him being an injury prone player, this actually has played him, you know, benefited him the, uh, significantly. Uh, we see him healthy pretty much week in and week out, very minimal um, uh, absences due to injury, uh, and that that's, has that's has poten- you know, not potentially, but has uh, increased the amount of minutes he plays. Which puts him in a in a different spot to be relevant on every single score uh, score sheet on every match. And the last thing that I also think help, helps him a lot is uh, we have seen an increased amount of interest and investment um, money coming from the U.S. And so I think uh, Serie A, in, not not specifically Serie A, but I think European football in general is looking to attract American talent and feature them constantly so they can get more uh, market in the U.S. Now I'm not saying that Polizia doesn't deserve. Uh, the the starting position and the leadership role that he's looking for he, that he needs to have. What I'm saying is this place this benefits this this is just an additional tad bit or additional thing that has helped him have a very successful half of the season. Yeah, knock on wood that he stays injury free and that he's able to keep up these numbers because um, we know that it's been a while since an American put up these types of numbers in Europe. Uh, speaking of that, uh, kind of want to highlight two other Americans that had you know that played forward slash striker roles and uh, had. Pretty good seasons. Uh, we remember Dempsey's time at Fulham and Tottenham, especially at Fulham, where he had that very good season 2010, 2011, where he scored 23 goals all in all competitions. There was also uh, Josie Altidore's best season in Europe, where it came with Asset Alkmaar in 2013, 2014, where he scored 28 goals in all competitions. He failed to generate that form in England. Uh, we saw his uh, really terrible form of like one goal in like over 50 games with Sunderland after that uh, AC Alkmaar um, stint. But um, as far as comparing Pulisic's current form, and obviously, you know, what we mentioned here with Dempsey and Josie Altador were full season long. Uh, we're only eight games in for AC Milan uh, currently. Um, how would, the, you know, this compare to Dempsey's and Altador's? Obviously, AC Milan is a much bigger club than Asad Akmar and um, Fulham. So do you think what we're seeing right now for Pulisic is more impressive? This is, this, this is very interesting. Um, and it's a totally valid discussion to have. Um, I am going to say, yes, I think it's more impressive what we see from Pulisic right now than we've have, than what we saw from Dempsey or Josie Altidore on those two seasons that you just mentioned. Um, and the whole reason is, uh, because I think Christian Pulisic arrived to AC, arrived to AC, Mil- AC Milan with a perspective of, okay, he's definitely not a star. But he has played. He has played at the highest level, and so the expectation for him on the get go was you have to deliver. On the other hand, Clint Dempsey was an unknown at Fulham, right? And if he delivered an spectacular performance throughout the entire season or half of the season, that that was going to be a pretty much uh, like a like a successful stint for him. In this case, Pulisic arrived with a, a huge luggage, right? A huge, a lot of baggage to perform. And then Norman, perf- Chelsea, a, a, Champions exactly. League winner. Yeah. Here we go. Like he had all these accolades and this long um, list of big teams that he had played for that it was going to be a, hey, man, if you're not performing, you're going to feel the pressure. And if you're performing, you're still going to feel the pressure, right? And so that, that's why I think it's it's more impressive, not only because of the numbers that he's putting out. And yes, the argument is totally valid. The Premier League is the best league in the world, and it has been for the last 15 years or so, if you want to call it. Um, and we all agree that I think Serie A right now, as of, as of today, cannot be compared to Premier League, right? Um, but if we only look at the player and the context of the player at that specific moment, I believe that Pulisic has, or still has, a significant, uh, a, a way more uh, pressure and expectations and 
uh, I guess, responsibility to deliver than either Altido or, or Dempsey ever had, um, you know, either at Eredivisie or Premier League. Yeah, good point. Uh, thinking about, you know, the luggage they brought, right? I mean, we, we obviously know that Altidore at the time was one of the youngest Americans being bought, brought over from USA MLS to Europe. Um, so there was that uh, when he went to Villarreal, um, that, which also didn't do well for him, but uh, that expectation of him. But uh, 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 Dempsey was, I think, early 20s, 24-ish, 25-ish when he went to uh, Fulham. Um, and uh, he was going from New England Revolution, if I'm recalling correctly. So there, like I said, there wasn't that big expectations they paid not a lot for him. If it didn't work out, okay, then we're going to lose millions. And, uh, you know, he was just another MLS guy. But, uh, you know, not, not taking away anything from Dempsey. He had a great career in Europe. And, uh, but yeah, having this this background, having knowing that Pulisic was brought up in the Dortmund Academy, um, never played in MLS, has this European background and uh, Champions League winner. I think that pressure is always going to be high for him to succeed. And he's succeeding and living up to the pressure, hopefully, uh, for the whole season. Um, so we could have a very, see a very successful American player having a successful season, you know, for the whole season um, at one of the top clubs of the world. So we'll see how it goes, Adrian. Uh, like we said, only eight games in. AC Milan currently sit uh, eighth in the table, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so not the best start for AC Milan. 14 points, 4-2-2 so far. Four wins, two draws, two losses. Um, they'll be hoping to climb up that ladder uh, ASAP. They, they do have one game in hand. Um, but uh, we'll see how, how that continues with uh, Captain America there at the helm. At the end, man, good episode talking pool of sick here. Uh, as we wrap up this episode, where can listeners find us? They can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Last but not least, you can also find us on Instagram and TikTok. We post memes, latest news, and shorts of our episodes. Yeah, so be sure to follow us if you prefer social media platform of choice. And if you haven't already, uh, let it help us reach 700 subscribers. Uh, subscribe in the uh, you know YouTube button down below. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Adrian, man, it's been a good one. See you in the next one, brother. Take it easy. See ya. Deuce.